Today, I'll be turning myself into a miniature Pokemon trainer with a large Charizard at my back. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. After watching Jazz's recent video where he turned himself into a Pokemon trainer and put out the Pokemon Art Trainer Challenge, I decided to put my own twist on it and make myself into a miniature Pokemon trainer. So here we go. So I started using Desktop Hero 3D. This is a free website where I built a basic shape that I thought represented myself. I picked from a couple of different poses and then I brought it over to Chitterbox where I added in some Pokeballs that I found on Thingiverse. I created two poses because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted my final design to look like. Then I added some Pokemon from Thingiverse and I got the whole thing exported and printed it off on my Elegu Mars 2 resin printer. Now that we have the models, it's time to prime them using a Fiddly Bits grey primer that I get from my local hardware store Bunnings for a couple of bucks. Next I give them a Xenothal highlight, which pretty much just means coming down from the top with a white to help accentuate the shadows and bring out some of the details in the miniatures. I use Citadel Wraithbone White spray paint for this part because it's specifically designed to take the contrast paints that I often use. Now that I have my miniatures, it's time to remove the masking. I printed these out using a clear resin so that I could play around with the effects of the fire. Unfortunately, I used some cheap masking tape and ended up breaking the flame off the tail. This was a simple fix with a little bit of super glue later on in the build. I know with a last name like Waters and being a bit of a gardening fanatic, I probably shouldn't have gone with a fire trainer. But after finding this Charizard model on Thingiverse, I just had an image of what this thing could look like. I came in with a Troll Slayer orange over the entire base of the Charizard. Before starting off with a towel light okra for the belly. This became an undercoat as I later went over it with a Ushabity bone. Next I came in with a black leather for the wings. And now for a few of those small details. Coming in with a white over the claws, teeth and the eyes. With small details like this, don't worry if you go a bit outside the lines. Just come back in with your original colour and touch up any edges that you might have gone over. Lastly, a bright red for the tongue and the rest of the inside of Charizard's mouth before moving on to the fire. And now for my fire effects. Using the clear resin and Citadel shades, I added a few different tones as an experiment using the broken off tail flame. Once I was happy with this method, I brought it across and started using it for the bigger flame. So the style is using Cassandora yellow as the base for the clear resin, and then hitting all the tips with a Karaborg crimson. And now to add the last few details by gluing the flame back onto the tail, and I decided that I didn't like the flat black on the wings. So I came in with the Citadel base of Abaddon Black. All right, I'm pretty happy with the Charizard. Now it's time to move on to the miniature me. So since I'm gonna be painting blonde hair for the first time, I think it's only appropriate that I stick my head full of blonde hair in front of the camera as much as possible to block almost every single shot. So let's get started with a contrast flesh tone. I'm gonna do my best to paint this guy with fairly accurate detail and keep this white base coat and the Zenithal highlight so that all these contrast paints really show off the shadow. So the first bright colour I'm going to come in with is a red to touch up the top of all these Pokeballs and put a few little details over the miniature's backpack. And now using Gore Grunter Brown and some Cygore Brown to do the backpack details and add the little straps. So my idea here is to come in using the same colours as my Charizard. So a bright orange jacket with a nice black inlay. There was a lot of experimentation as I went, starting off with black for the pants and putting that same brown on my shirt that I used on the Charizard, which I will later change to a much more cream color. It's not uncommon that I'll change my mind on things as I go and kind of just slap paint on and see what I like, especially on a creative build like this one. Coming in and adding a few more details, like a red sash, a few more blotches of white on the Pokeballs, and darkening up the shoes. It was at this point that I realised I didn't like the black pants, so I changed the pants out to a towel light ochre 
before coming in and adding a black trim to the jacket to match Charizard's wings. After having a look at a reference image, I realised the Charizard's belly needed to be much lighter, so I used Ushabity Bone over top of the Towelite Okra that I'd used previously. Now that I've changed that colour, I have to make my trainer match, so I take the Ushabity Bone and apply a layer over top of the shirt on the miniature. While I'm here cleaning up some details with the bone colour, I add on the detail of the rope around my waist before moving on to a Sandari dust base for my first ever attempt at blonde hair. The method that I used is essentially a Sandari dust base with a Ushabity bone highlight and then a few more highlights added in with Pallid Witch Flesh. There are much more in-depth painting guides for blonde hair online and I'll link the one that I used in the description. Once all my highlights were in place, I dulled the whole thing down and blended the colours together using a combination of the contrast paint Skeleton Horde and the Technical Contrast Medium. Finally, I had to come in for some last little details. I added the black and white sections to the Pokeball in higher detail and I went around the rest of the miniature touching up areas that I could. Now coming back in to add some highlights to their hair with the Ushabity Bone and the Pallid Witch Flesh. Okay, now to start the base layer by piling on a mud texture from Citadel. Once this is dry, the second base layer comes on with the crackling Agrelin Earth, again from Citadel. The thicker this paint's applied, the better the crackle in the end. And finally for the base, using an Abaddon Black to put a nice little border around the edge. I'm actually pretty happy with how this guy turned out. Off camera, I painted in the blue eyes on both myself and the Charizard and added in a few more little details, including the first yellow layer of the Firestone that I have around my waist. Next was to come in with the technical red gemstone paint from Citadel and give myself a nice layer of this glossy technical paint to work with. Once this was partially dry, I came in with a small pin and scratched off the edges, trying to shape the red piece in the centre into a small flame. Then coming in over top with a Game Ink Yellow, just tapping it on top to let it coat the entire thing. This semi-transparent ink gives the image of a golden stone holding a frozen flame. Perfect for my fire trainer. After a quick test of the model in place, I thought the fire needed a little bit more pop. So I came in with a bright yellow base, then using a mostly dried out brush and this bright yellow to add a few more embers over the top of the flame. All right, now that my miniature and my Charizard are good to go, I think I need to build them out on a base. So I'm gonna use some of my more classic techniques and stay away from the 3D printer for this one. So to start my base, I grabbed some scrap bone and placed it together in a rough idea to see the size that I wanted. I'm using installation foam here, but you can use anything from packing foam to cardboard to bark from the garden. Now that I have a rough idea of how I want it to lay out, I place my miniature on the top of the foam and draw the circle around his base, as I want this miniature to recede a little bit below the ground level. So I pull out my scalpel and get to cutting. Be careful with this as it can be fiddly work. But by just pressing in and using some blades, you can definitely shape this stuff in some really great ways. Just be careful to keep the scalpel on the foam and away from your skin. All right, now that he fits in nicely, it's time to start gluing some of this together. First off, I grab the PVA glue before remembering this stuff is terrible with foam. You see, PVA glue needs air to dry, so it's not recommended. Stick with the hot glue gun. So while I was waiting for that to heat up, I decided to add some texture to the sides of the rocks. By taking the scalpel and running the blade in both directions and then scraping along the side, you pull out a lot of very different and unique shapes in the side of this foam. This can be really great for an earth look, especially once we've coated it with Mod Podge later on. Now that that's heated up, it's time to start gluing things together. So essentially I just start grabbing bits of foam and sticking them in wherever I think they look like rocks might naturally sit. 
while continuing to texture the rocks that I stick in along the way. There are no wrong answers here. Just have a bit of fun and start throwing them on however you think it looks cool. Okay, once I was pretty happy with the shape, I decided to add in a couple of little sneaky hidden details. So I used the hot glue gun to punch a little hole into the foam, and then I stuck in this little 3D printed diglet. I'm hiding a couple of these and a little fossil stone on this miniature. And now that I have the final details in place, it's time for the first layer of mob podge. This stuff will dry clear and matte and just help hold everything together with a nice solid layer. This layer will also protect the foam from the spray paint that I plan on using for the base coat as to not melt all the foam as soon as it's hit. I made sure to come back in afterwards with an old paintbrush and clean off the extra Mod Podge around the small details as to not have it dry and clog up all the detail before I get a chance to paint it into the final miniature. Now to add a little bit more texture to these higher areas, while the Mod Podge is wet I sprinkled some dirt that I keep for my basing allowing it to sit on the flat areas and naturally drop down and get caught in some of the crevices. Before again coming in with that old brush and cleaning these off the detailed little miniatures. Once I sprayed it I realised there were a few small holes so I went over the whole thing again with another layer of Mod Podge before spraying the entire thing again with a matte black. Next up, I'm going to use the same zenithal highlight method that I used earlier, except I'm going to focus it on the area that I know the flame will be showing, as this is where most of the light from the model would be coming from, and thus casting shadows from this point. So I went through a few stages now. Firstly, dry brushing a few layers of grey over all of the stone texture, before coming in with a thick layer of basilicanum grey, a contrast paint by Citadel. Sprinkling some dirt into the wet paint just to add some texture and colour variation and then coming in with another fairly heavy dry brush of grey. Before adding the same texture paints to the flat areas of this that I used on the base of the miniature. So starting out with the mud and then moving on to the agrelin earth to add the crackle texture. The thicker that this is applied, the more intense that the crackle effect will show up so I'll put it thinner on these small areas and the big bunches on top and you see how good this looks the next day once it's dried. I also used the opportunity while this was drying to paint on the small diglets. Now I decided again that I didn't really like the grey effect on the stone so I came in and washed the entire thing with an Agrax earth shade. And now that it had a natural look I got onto my favourite part adding on the shrubbery. I'm using a combination of a few different Vallejo grass tufts here and some flowers that I bought online. Now I'll use a little bit of Mod Podge to add some static grass and a little bit of dirt to help blend it in. And then repeating the same process but this time with a little bit of foam flock to look like some moss and other plants growing up the side of the rock. Finally, to blend the model into the base, I burnt back some of the plants and added some black paint to the edges to make it look singed before dry brushing some black onto the ground to make a scorched effect and then doing the same to the miniatures base to match him to the display base. The last thing to do was to glue Charizard into place and see what the final result looked like. This thing turned out awesome and it's going to take a place on my shelf. I think I'm going to have to do a few more of these dioramas putting myself into some of my favourite fantasy worlds. Let's see where we go next on Set Make Stuff. <laughs>